Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 25 of my KSP campaign. Uh, I've got a few things coming up. I'm going to do some anomaly hunting in this particular episode. If you if you like seeing these little Easter, couple of these little Easter eggs that are hidden around uh, the game that Squad has put around on the surface of Kerbin, then this could be an episode for you. Uh, also, we'll be launching our flyby to Minmus in this particular episode, but uh, right here, well, I don't know, I'm just playing around with the different camera views. I got this on lock view while this stage, this stage came from Curse Dock 5 from uh, those few episodes ago when it did some a rescue mission. This is the stage coming in through the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, lock camera does get a little bit wobbly here, but it's kind of cool when the parachutes finally deploy. Yeah, and it's nice to know too that my uh, my stage recovery system is is starting to work uh, fairly consistently now, so that uh, will help keep the cost of my launches down. But let's go to Svetlana in the Otter One, who has a contract to go out and check out the pyramids. One of a number of Easter eggs that are hidden all the way, all around throughout the game, Kerbal Space Program. Um, this particular contract is from a contract pack called Anomaly Hunter or Anomaly Find. I can't quite remember. It's in the, it's in the credits at the end. Um, there are a number of ways of finding these anomalies. You can stumble upon them on your own. You can, and also ScanSat, uh, I think it's the biome scanner, which I haven't unlocked yet. It indicates the positions of anomalies on maps. But uh, this contract, uh, you know, it gives you a contract, puts a waypoint out there for you to go and follow. Of course, we're using waypoint, um, waypoint manager to help, uh, to give us a heading and a, and a distance is good 700 kilometers away and by the way if you consider it a spoiler that you're uh, that I'm about to show you the, the location and, and 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 the looks of this particular anomaly then uh, go ahead and follow the link that you see down there at the bottom and it'll skip past this mission and go into the next mission if you don't want to see what's coming up if this is something you would rather find out on your own as I got up to my cruising altitude, I started to notice something. My estimated time of arrival at the pyramids is about 47, 46 minutes. But according to Kerbal Engineer, I only got about 42 minutes of fuel left. So those two things don't go together well. So I'll just cut my throttle down a little bit, reduce my speed a little bit. Yeah, that, that looks a little better now. Now estimated time is 44 minutes. And Kerbal Engineer is predicting about 59 minutes of fuel left. Uh little tight but should be comfortable nonetheless obviously this will be she won't be returning back we'll have to pick her up at the pyramids I really need to uh, redesign the Otter 1 here I mean it's still using some pretty old parts the uh, fuel tanks or even the small rocket fuel tanks that, un that are unlocked really early in the game I'm not even using the airplane fuselage fuel tanks that are just liquid fuel so uh, I can probably put this together and make this something that can fly a little bit of a further distance than what this thing can with the parts I have available. Now the eagle-eyed viewer might be wondering why it's Svetlana in here because in the last episode my last flight was also done with Svetlana and I'm supposed to be rotating them and in fact it was Valentina's turn. Well here's the story. See there's this curse of the Pharaoh and uh, the pilots, the various pilots, Jeb and Valentina and Svetlana, were talking about the curse of the Pharaoh and who, would, you know, and uh, and who would want to beat the curse. And Svetlana, who is easily our most cowardly pilot, thought this was an opportunity for her to prove herself. So she snuck out in the early dawn, got into the Otter One, and headed off to the pyramids on her own, skipping past Valentina. Well, actually, the truth of the matter is. Uh, I clicked on the wrong purple when I went to Phil to start this mission, so <laughs> it was actually my fault. But I thought I'd go with this story. It was the curse of the Pharaoh. Yes, why not? I don't know about you guys, but I am starting to see a glimpse of the pyramids there. Absolutely. They seem to be tucked into a rather nasty-looking valley. So I'm certainly going to have to... Uh... Oh, wait. I just see EVA. Oh, we're in the mountains. Okay, it's in the mountains. That's good. I haven't done an EVA in the mountains, I don't think. Pretty sure I haven't. All right. Yeah, let's... Ooh, we're getting a nice little glimpse of them here. Definitely going to have to get a closer look at them later. But the first step 
is going to be finding a decent spot to land which looks like it's going to be a little more challenging than I originally thought you know that land down there to the left of the plane that might be my best bet let's see if we can circle around and get back there okay so we're closing in here still a good distance away Oh yeah, a good nine kilom over nine and a half kilometers from the from the pyramids, but I figure I'll just drive there and oh that ridge is looking a little bit intimidating. I think I can do it. Pull up a bit. Pull up and oh whoa whoa oh jeez. <laughs> the cockpit just kind of broke off there. Okay. Well Svetlana is still here. <laughs> That could have gone worse, uh, you know, I guess any landing you can walk away from, right? Okay, so well, we can do an atmospheric scan. Yeah, I still even have sciencey stuff on there. I guess that's something. Okay, let's get Svetlana out. See if she can survey the situation a little bit. Now what would be really awesome if we can pick these up? I can't pick them up. Can I log the temperature? Oh, I need to be a scientist. Okay, you know, I'm so used to Kerbal attachment systems. Okay, so I gotta go inside to log the stuff. That's alright, I'll do that. Uh, let's see, desert, yeah. So I'm in the desert, not the mountains here. We'll go back out and we'll collect that science and stick it back in and then what we'll do is what I'd love to do is be able to detach these. I, I'm very used to working with Kerbal Attachment System. Store that in there. And being able to remove these things but yeah okay let's just wait. Let's see if we can figure this out because Kerbal Attachment System has added on a dependency called Kerbal um, inventory system which is something I'm still getting used to it's by the same people she should have an inventory there it is and now I want to be able to oh that's right you hold X oh shoot I need a tool I need a tool to detach stuff which I suppose makes sense you can't just pull them right off and I got wrenches you get wrenches really really early and I didn't think to put a wrench in the cockpit. Maybe that's something I should just get in the habit of doing is always putting tools into the cockpit. To be honest, I'm not even convinced she could have done it anyway because she's not an engineer. You think she, well, whatever. We'll run off. Oh, what it's going to take? An hour and 10 minutes of running. Better time warp. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's a, there's a goo canister that survived. Let's go check that out. Maybe we can do some goo science here in the desert. Checking the goo. Observe mystery goo. And I need to be a scientist. Ah, shoot. You know, I'm wondering too, even if she could remove that science equipment, she might not be able to use them anyway. I don't think she could because she's not a scientist. I really should, uh start playing around with this a little bit more so I can be a little bit more prepared for these eventualities. And yeah, it's a bit of a jog to the pyramids, but notice I got a couple of mods that are actually helping me out. One is that the Waypoint Manager mod is still working, even though we are EVA, it's still giving me, you know, my distance and my estimated time of arrival and even a heading. And speaking of heading, notice that the nav ball is still up. Yes, uh, normally with EVA the nav ball disappears, but the nav ball is staying there. To be honest, I don't know why KSP makes the nav ball disappear. It's incredibly useful, and it is completely reasonable to assume that our Kerberos may have a compass with them. Um, so there's still a waypoint on the nav ball. It's giving me my speed. It's giving me a heading to look at, and that's thanks to uh, EVA enhancements, another mod that I have installed, which to be quite frank, becomes even more useful um, when you're out in space. But even here, just having the little nav ball there, I think is a great thing to have. Okay, we're just under a kilometer away, but we're coming up to this ridge. Let's see what we can... 
Ooh. Look at that. Well, now I feel like an explorer. Yes, a regular Tomb Raider. Bit of a steep hill going down. Yeah, this is going to require a little bit of switchbacking, going back and forth. The last thing I want is for Svetlana to take a bit of a tumble and end up killing herself somehow so close to the goal. But after a little bit of switchbacking, we were there. Yeah, I just got to get close enough for it to tell me that uh, we're in the right location. Not close enough yet. Wow, it really wants me in the middle of all of this, I think. Come on, where is it? I'm pretty much in the center here. There we go! All right. Contract goes green. Wow, that took a little bit of an effort. But uh, she is there. We'll do our EVA report. Oh, wait, the contract's already gone green. And I've already done an EVA report back when I first crossed into the mountains. I didn't show that to you. Let's see, there's an inscription on the statue. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed? and two-footed and three-footed. Oh, come on. Really, I hate this stuff. <laughs> I suck at riddles so bad. And the contract is complete. I'll have to put some thought into that. Okay, anyway, uh, that's going to have to, that's gonna be it. So we'll just call for recovery. I always find this part kind of funny that you could be anywhere on Kerbin, did all this effort to get here, get recover and they magically get you. But, uh, well, to be honest, I wouldn't want it any other way. I then time warped ahead a few days to the completion of the upgrade on the administrative building. This is going to be great. So this is going to allow me to get back into those strategies, something I haven't done in quite some time. I set a strategy very early in this particular campaign, and I haven't gotten to it uh, since now. So we're going to delete the old fundraising campaign, and then we're going to restart fundraising, pump that up to 60%, which is the maximum I'm allowed to do with the level two administrative building. So we'll take that guy in. Excellent, cost me 44 reputation. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and then we'll take the unpaid research program and we'll put that up to the remaining 40%. You know, on second thought, that will mean that I'm at 100% of my reputations being converted into other things. I won't be gaining a reputation. Let's put it at 30%, so I'm still gaining a smidge of reputation. So that means 30% of future reputation gains will be converted to science. 60% of future reputation gains will be converted to fundraising. Excellent. Then it's time to do some more time warping. Three and a half days to the completion of the Kerpalo 2, which is going to be our Minmus mission. Very exciting. Got quite a lot in here. That Karayan, that's going to be a big vessel. But that's taking a long time to build. It's only halfway built. Still nine and a half days to go. All right, uh, do the vessel rollout. One, there we go. Uh, I can see that the Otter 1 is going to be finished first. I don't have a mission for the Otter 1, so I am gonna just, we'll just time warp past that, and then we'll time warp past the rollout. Okay, oh, we got a notification here. Oh, it's just telling me the Otter 1's complete, that's fine. There's still a notification there. What's this? Contract complete. That's my remote tech contract to put a network around the moon. I started that last episode, but I only put up one satellite. One satellite does not make up a network. One satellite does not cover 95% of the moon. How the heck did that happen? That makes no sense. Obviously, that's some sort of a bug. That doesn't make sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete my moon network as planned with three satellites because I actually do want to have that communication network around the moon. In the meantime, let's go to Kapalo 2 here on the pad, getting ready for launch. And we are going to Minmus, and one thing, well, there's a couple of things, number of things that are different between Minmus and the moon, but one of the big things is, is that unlike the moon, the Minmus is in an inclined orbit. Now, it's only an inclination of 6 degrees, but, again, don't do that inclination change out in space. Get yourself lined up beforehand. So we're going to take... Uh, Minmus's orbit and we're going to line it up and we're going to use the moon's orbit as our indicator of what an inclination of zero looks like. So we're, I'm looking at the moon. I know there's a number of orbits here. It's a bit confusing, but I'm lining up both the moon's orbit and the Minmus's. Oh my gosh, we're just about there. We're already pretty much under the ascending node of Minmus. So the hell with this. Let's go. 
lift off. All right. And you can see along for the ride, well, most notably is Bill. This is Bill's first mission. It's hard to believe, you know, we're, we're over 170 days into this campaign and finally Bill gets his boots off the ground to be put into a can for two weeks in space. Oh, well, it is nothing like baptism by fire, right? <laughs> and along for the ride as well, we have our scientist Carol and we have our tourist Alil. Alil. I'll go with Alil. We actually had Alil. Alil also did the flyby by the moon, but she now is not satisfied with just that. She also wants to do a flyby of Minmus. So, Kripalo 2, there has been some changes since the Kripalo 1. Uh, most notably right now is the loss of the 8 SRBs that used to push this thing off the pad. Now it's down to 4 more powerful liquid fuel boosters, as you can see, and I got some asparagus staging going. Yeah, I never did like that cluster of eight. They're they're packed way too tight together. These come off nice and cleanly, and 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 I recover them as well. So that's that's nice. And I really like the look right now. I like it with the two boosters and that. I don't know. To me, that looks looks pretty neat. Anyway, uh, orbital insertion, no problem whatsoever. You've seen me do orbital into low carbon orbits before. So uh, why don't we talk about some of the improvements I've made to the actual uh, vessel itself? One thing I did is doubled up the number of solar panels. You might recall that the Kripalo 1 had electrical issues, but I also got rid of that redundant engine, the backup engine, and replaced it with these guys down here at the bottom. These are RCS thrusters, but look at that. I mean, come on, isn't that cool? I love that. <clears throat> okay, those come from homegrown rockets. And yeah, I know they're just RCS thrusters. I, I, I hid the monopropellant in here. Okay, so there's some mono repellent. I know that does not look like much, but there is over 300 meters per second of mono propellant. That's with the fuel tanks full. There's more than that probably uh, if I drain all the fuel tanks. And although those RCS thrusters can't produce a lot of uh, thrust, it's only about a tenth of a G, um, out in space that's not a big deal. And 300 meters per second plus, that should be more than enough to get these guys out of any trouble they might get themselves into. And just to remind people, the reason I need the backup is because I am playing with Dang It, and uh, there's always a possibility that main engine might fail, and if they have no means of propulsion, they're in a heck of a lot of trouble. So that's what the backup monopropellant is for, in case that main engine fails. And we're just setting up our maneuver here. Uh, it's about 920 meters per second to get out to Minmus for your budgetary needs. So now we'll focus our view on Minmus and take a look at our encounter here. You can see I'm a little bit south of the planet. Uh, yeah, my, my, my inclination isn't perfectly matched. Uh, that's actually because I launched a little bit late. You can actually notice that. If you go back and take a look, you'll see that I'm a little bit past the ascending node of Minmus right at launch. Um, if I time warp to the other side of the planet, then it would have been a night launch. I didn't want to do a night launch. So, yeah, it's okay. But this is going to be just a very minor correction. But we're not going to be doing that correction right now. No, you want to do corrections. That's going to be a planar change of the... You're going to change the plane of the orbit just a little bit. But the cheapest place to do that is far away from the, plan, uh, the object that you're orbiting from. I don't want to do this in low carbon orbit. That's going to be expensive. Remember, prograde retrograde uh, burns are cheaper when you're close to the parent body. The other burns, radial and normal burns, are cheaper when you're away, when you're going more slowly. Uh, so we're going to just do this prograde burn right now, and then we'll set up our correction burn. All right, so with that accomplished, it's time to set up our correction burn. So we just pick a spot just out here. Sometimes it's hard to click on these. There we go. So out here, you know, in the middle of our trajectory on our way out to Minmus. And I'm going to set up. A little bit of positive normal because I can see I need to burn north right away. And you can see only a few meters per second is enough to already have a significant change. And then you want to play around a little bit with the time. But you can see that as you're watching my pit, you can see moving it around. And I'm moving it around. I got it on a thousand times. So this is, what's that? Or ten times. So that's a thousand seconds each, each click. You can see as it's moving around, it's not affecting the... 
uh, resulting trajectory all that much. So this particular burn is not that time sensitive. It just needs to be, you know, just out there in the middle of nowhere, really, is really what it's all about. So, okay, I want to do the same thing. I want to come around Minmus. Whoops. Oh, I just changed it by 100. There we go. I want to come around Minmus in a retrograde direction. So we're going to enter in on the, the uh, I guess from Kerbin's perspective, that would be the east side. I always get mixed up with wests and easts in there. You, although the side I'm on, retrograde around, that's what I'll call it. And then I want to get my periapsis in nice and close. I play around with, is it going to be the radial that's going to affect it more or the prograde? And it turns out prograde affects it more. So a little bit of anti-retrograde actually. And that gets my periapsis in nice and close. And, of course, at our closest approach to Minmus, we're going to do a prograde burn to bring down our periapsis relative to Kerbin down into the atmosphere. You might recall during my moon uh, flyby, this burn caught me a little bit by surprise that it was much more expensive than I expected. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plot it ahead of time. Precise node makes it really easy to bounce between multiple nodes. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of prograde here, and I'm watching my periapsis with Kerbin. And this is just really rough. I just want to get a rough idea of what it's going to cost me. And I'm already seeing, I'm getting that, there we go, way into the atmosphere. I'm only like 60-something meters per second. That's good enough. I can see now that this is not going to be an expensive burn around Minmus. Okay, so we'll delete that second node. That second maneuver, that's done. Somehow in all of this, ended up colliding with Minmus. I'm not quite sure how that happened, so obviously I need to, to fix that a little bit. No, I need, I need to go prograde here. A little bit of prograde, there we go. That pushes the periapsis out past Minmus. And the other thing you want to take a look at is you want to take a look at the plane of your orbit after your encounter. You can see I'm quite a ways out of the orbital plane of Minmus, so I'll do a little bit of a normal adjustment to try and get... I, I want everything to stay in the same plane. I don't want to end up with a crazy inclination coming out there. That looks good. Now look at this. Okay, 27 kilometers is a little far away, but I'll use the timing of the burn to more precisely dial that in there we go that looks that looks good about 12 kilometers the plane of my resulting orbit in green looks good everything looks good so we will be coming to this maneuver in a couple of days but that's going to have to be for the next episode right now we're going to finish off with one more of these anomaly hunting missions back on Kerbin we are joining Valentina on one of our easiest of these anomaly missions, we are going to the island airport, as you can see. We have a mission to climb the control tower there and to visit the pod that is in the hangar. Um, yeah, this I've already been here, so I can't even call this a spoiler now. I went here earlier in the game just, just because it was a nice place to go. But uh, all we have to do is uh, complete our landing, climb on out, and climb this control tower. Yeah, and the, this tower is pretty tall, so in the interest of brevity, let's speed this up to four times speed. There we go. Look at her, the stairmaster, <laughs> getting her exercise. Okay, pretty close to the top. There we are. We are there. We're at the top. I do like this new climb feature. And now you push it air and climb up on stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, she looks pretty good. Oh, I wonder if I can see the plane. Let's go over here and, and do some climbing. You know, I'm going to do a quick save here. Just a very quick save. There we go. Pushing F5. Uh, the reason is, is I, I was worried I was going to end up glitching through there. But there's my plane. I can see it. Wow, we're up high. I think I can see my house from here. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's going to have to end it for this episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.